it's me Elizabeth Delosa and welcome or welcome back to my channel and to this video guys we are here now at Diamond Suit and Residences to cover Paddle Forward Cebu Press Conference Organization registered in SEC. So, we registered in SEC. 
we had been planning to this since mid last year during the pandemic time uh, during the height of pandemic with the intent of helping tourism bounce back sa Cebu especially since we had getting a lot of excitement from global public community to come here in Cebu and experience the six month outdoor canoe in the country from my own company Island Bus Philippines and from my own pocket shallow pocket not deep pocket okay <laughs> I have built two OC6 here in Cebu. The canoes were built out of passion and because I believe after being able to paddle the entire stretch of the Philippines from southern tip to the northern tip, that Cebu has the potential of being the paddling capital of the Philippines. Paddling is in our blood as islanders. Autogun canoe is part of our culture. Our ancestors traveled and play on the waters using outdoor canoes and to call the canoe is an island and the island is a canoe. So let me explain this to you in Visaya that Cebu is like a shape of a canoe. Uh, the south side is where the ancestors of the pavilion could be kayo ang mga Musayan, no? Sa north, na murug na sa pagyo, na huwa nila maroto. So in an island, we have to take care the island, we have to paddle as one and kanigigo nila we have, we will heal as one so kaning six month canoe it's a very important part of us in Cebu so as we work together in every stroke you now we're going to bring back the aloha to the island to the people, the culture and a lot of things bring happiness to the people and we will take care of each other as we paddle along Starting at the um, paddle proverb Cebu. So this is the one of the Hawaiian proverbs na ito ang isunod sa ito ang kultura karo na hindi And of course, as some of you know, it has been a very challenging journey for all of us in POCC to fulfill this expedition project. We had to find the right crew, and you are the right crew. And I had to thank the 13 paddlers 14 including Lloyd, of course, for their time, dedication, and perseverance to know the heart of paddling the OC6, considering that they all came from a different backgrounds. Special thanks also to our coach, Faye Jimera. For sharing, for sharing her knowledge to our support crew, headed by Island Daddy Randy Salazar. For Christine Villanueva. Who's the youngest father in Center Dami. <laughs> uh, both are also founding members of the POCC. Ano sila ito mga members. And finally, after all the adversities, we can finally paddle as free nation, explore the beautiful waters around South Cebu, and eventually complete the plan to circumnavigate the entire island. We would not have done this without the help of our partners. I have more partners, Nadia's Tarpolin, no? the Department of Tourism, of course, the Cebu City Government through Government Gwen Garcia, the Queen of Cebu, and of course, Cebu City Tourism, through Councilor Joe Pescara, Napulapu City Government through Congressman Paz Radaza, who is also the Queen of Bactan, and our partners, LGUs, uh, where we're going to stop, of course, Argao, Uslo, Alegria, and Mualual. So these are the islands that we're going to stay for overnight at the stopovers. Our partners resort, of course, is Maayo Argao, Stay in Safe Oslo, Alegria Dive Resort, and Club Serena, as well as Diamond Suites, Masa Takaron, like host sa ito ang uh, press conference. Lagyan salamat, Diamond Suites. And all other partners who have contributed in any way they can, including those from paddling community, 
our family friends who have shown unrelenting support. We will be paddling not just for ourselves, as a way of conquering this adventure, but also for our country. As we all paddle forward, despite the waves, despite the storm, despite the challenges, buksay tabay. Tudayang salamat. So, hatag na mo balik sa host na si Christine, or itaw na itaw si Aylan Paul. Thank you very much, Bazi. Yes, let us all paddle together. And um, he's always saying, Bugsay tabay. But this time around, I'll say, Bugsay tadai. <laughs> because uh, I'll be welcoming uh, Miss Faith Jimiera, POCC coach and founding member, uh, to help us explain more about the Paddle Forward Cebu Expedition. <laughs> So just a bit, a little bit of a history. I found the love of ocean paddling after recovering from cancer, and I joined Singapore Paddle Club, which helped me to um, restore back my my health condition. That's why I'm really sharing the joy of ocean paddling because of what it did to me. So um um I'm back, I was back in uh, in the Philippines only last year. So from then on, we started to push and. Uh, set up and really organize um, an ocean paddling lifestyle here in Cebu and wanted to make it the uh, ocean paddling capital of the Philippines. And I've met uh, wonderful people like all of you, <laughs> especially the two. So um, the purpose of this um, actually POCC is to revive uh, ocean paddling and traditional sailing here in the Philippines. And uh, with the disruption last year with uh, coronavirus, we all knew that tourism was really um, hit hard, as well as the rest of the industry. So we wanted to make something different, or we wanted to make a change as well, and we wanted to um, make an impact with, uh, with tourism, with sports tourism. Yeah, so, um, yeah, as I mentioned earlier, we wanted to develop an aqua water sports here in, in Cebu and uh, make ourselves ready actually to welcome uh, international races uh, locally and we can also race abroad because there are so many races abroad uh, in Hawaii, Tahiti, even in Hong Kong and in Japan so we can definitely um, with, with, the, with the strength of our partners we have um, I from the national team <laughs> and the uh, Dragon Boat team who is with us here also and definitely we can work hand in hand with them to um, go out also and battle uh, abroad. Yeah, so this is what we actually envision. This is my club in Singapore. And uh, this is what we wanted also to maybe embark here with uh, different nationalities in one team. We have like 25 nationalities in one club. So that is something of a diversity. <laughs> and then um, this is the plan. So we embark on the journey to um, Mualual, um by Saturday and of course maybe in the next five months we want to complete and circumnavigate Cebu Island hopefully within the year. <laughs> and then we wanted to make it sustainable. Um, actually, um, how deep is sustainable um, to us? We wanted really create uh, more uh, ocean awareness and more uh, love for the ocean because a lot of people say uh, be sustainable but there's really a deeper meaning than, than that okay. so the first stop would be in Argao so we are working uh, closely with the mayor's office and the tourism office so we will be uh, traveling a 55 kilometer distance or it could be more depending on the weather uh, wind condition and the current so we are aware that there is an upcoming low depression somewhere in the north, uh, in the Luzon area. So 
we, we are hoping and praying that uh, it will not uh, affect so much um, the current year. So from uh, for so we will be uh, stopping in Naga for uh, 15 kilometers and our next change we are doing a, a crew change on the water, we call it sea change. And then uh, next is San Fernando, Ceboga, and our last stop is in Argao. So we will be resting overnight in Argao. And then the next day, uh, we will be traveling to Oslo. From Argao, we will be changing again crew from Indalaget, Alcoy, Bolhoon, and the last stop for the second day is in Oslo. That's a 53 kilometer distance. And uh, interestingly, on the third day, we will be doing a little bit of our recovery day. But uh, in the morning, um, we have uh, identified at least 15 teams for the next generation of uh, paddlers who we will be teaching a little bit of paddle clinic. Uh, this is in uh, participation with Race to Share Singapore and with Isla Cariola. They are a group of uh, uh, NGOs who would want to give crayons <laughs> to our kids that we will be teaching um, uh, paddling there. And afternoon, we will be going around Sumilan Island for another maybe 17 to 20 kilometers for that. And then uh, on the fourth day, we are traveling to Alegria. Here we also um, for, we have coordinated closely with the mayor's office and the tourism office of Alegria. So that is a total distance of uh, 46 uh, kilometers. So um, we will definitely be shooting um, uh, tourist, um, uh, feature tourist and destinations along this coastline because this is what this is what we wanted to feature um, to um, make other uh, competitive um, teams uh, come here when uh, the border opens. <laughs> so our last day is uh, from Alexia to, to Bajaj. So that is just a close um, starting distance of uh, 20 kilometers. Type whatever. <laughs> yeah, type whatever. <laughs> and then um, this is uh, just a few photos of our um, training. So we really trained hard for this. We uh, we didn't have enough time, so we we add more intense. We added more intensity on the training. The normal training should be like two hours, maybe, or for safety, safety. But we extended to like three to three point five hours. Yes, nice Yeah. So as you mentioned, this is uh, our uh, president and uh, POC, the POC president yeah. and. Uh, our captain one, Mr. Bazi Guzlong, he is uh, primarily in charge of the current and then the weather updates for us. <laughs> and that is me. <laughs> I think I've uh, said a little bit of myself already. <laughs> and then these are our pretty tatters. Uh, maybe we can ask them to come here uh, once I call their names. Uh, I will call on Ryan, Caputo, Dr. Sheila, uh, Res. Uh, Arnold is not around. Is, uh, wait, Arnold is here? And then uh, Josephine, maybe you can come here so we can immediately take a photo. Let's go, Pam. Yeah. Yes, please come And then on. Uh, Josephine, Mom Josephine. Carlo the Asses, our surfer. Um, Charlie, of course, our uh, model father. <laughs> uh, we have Amanda, who is also a surfer. And uh, Alberto Saverde is one of the dragon boat uh, masters that we have here. And Rain also, Rain is not around there. Okay, and then I, of course, I is our uh, national team, uh, Philippine national team of dragon boat. Mr. Jun, who is also a uh, super mighty dragon paddler. And then I think, uh, we are Randy. Uh, or um, we are certified. Fancy and Faye, of course. <laughs> <laughs> so these are the team for the expedition. So just to just to explain though, what we will be using is what we call OC6 or six man single outrigger canoe. So one canoe, as you can see in the photo, would have six people. Uh, we have a total of 30 paddlers, so they will be changed over, no? Uh, based on the locations, destinations that uh, Faye has mentioned. This team has been practicing in SRT along El Corso area. Um, they even tried padding from 
Yung Corso to Olanco, which is around 50 kilometers back and forth. So, round of applause for our paddlers and we wish them all good luck this coming June 12. Ensure that it is always safety first. 
take care of your partner first. So rest assured that we practice uh, also part of that uh, to develop really a presence of mind once we capsize on the water with different kinds of wind and the weather conditions. So this uh, canoe long distance race really um, values um, um, team spirit on a deeper level. But I have to ensure I bring the crew back safely on shore. Yeah, so that's the bond, a different bond uh, on a different level compared to, um, let's say, rubber boating, which is just a 500 or 21 kilometer distance. Any other questions? Any other question from the press? Yes, ma'am. Yes, ma'am. Hello, Ramon from the Green Man. Well, um, I'm sorry, I was late over there and may have missed uh, this question, but naabay ka for the sake of context, naabay ka expedition or activity na nakitabo before na this particular expedition is trying to break back or na-inspire ka siya ang uh, activity? Yes, well, we had an expedition uh, last year during the pandemic, during the opening of our Bali Tourism Mosa Cebu. So we did a voyage together with uh, uh, Zoom Mighty Dragon. So we voyaged from Mactan Utah Beach all the way to Danau. Uh, from Danau all the way to Danau back to Mactan Utah. Yeah, back and forth with different groups. So this, were, this was one of the farthest crossings that we did. And also during the training, so that they were so inspired after that. People were so inspired because they're learning uh, new uh, types of paddle sports that you can really uh, cross your boundaries and voyage to islands to islands in high seas, in wavy area, and strong winds. And our last practice, we voyage from El Corso and we crossed to two tight flats from Cordoba or the way to Orlando Island in one of the sanctuary there. So this is a total of around 45 kilometers. It was a good distance for, for, for training. So we crossed two channels and two tight flats, one way and back. Uh, and it's inspiring, it's, you know, it's connecting the, the nature of the ocean and to each other as we battle together. And uh, for those of you who, who know Bazi, no? um, you know he has paddled from Sarangani to Pagod Point in 88 days. That's 3,025 kilometers stretch of the Philippines. But that's using a sea kayak. Um, that, that was 2010. 2009. 2009. 2017, he did um, from Dan to Pagod Point using five different watercrafts. Where name? Maya to Santander. Santander, sorry. Santander. Um, but that's just him. It's a single man expedition. But this time around, uh, they'll be paddling as a team. And this is the first time that uh, they will be using uh, an OC6 or a six man single outrigger canoe. Um, and the, the one that they'll be using is the only OC6 that you can find in the Philippines. Yes. So the 200 kilometer distance is the, is, is going to set a record because the, the ones that Buzz mentioned uh, is just around what? 40, 50, 45 yes. kilometers. Yes. No? So imagine five times of that. That's what the team would be doing this coming June 12 to 16. Any questions for Paul? As ceremony and then I'll come back to you. Hello, um, this is GJ of Misaya YouTubers Club. I just want to know with regards to the paddle for War Cebu, I know this will be an eye opener to all municipalities here in Cebu. Do we have any futuristic plans like uh, racing or any plans or activities with regards to paddling here in Cebu? Oh yeah, there's a lot of plans because we are, uh, this type of crew has always has a plan. 
and always has a flow plan, they call it the flow plan. Yeah, one of the uh, missions here is really to bring Cebu as, uh, make Cebu as the paddle sports capital of the Philippines. And with a six month canoe, uh, the mission is to organize races, right? This is one of the mission of Philippine Archery Canoe Club. And of course, uh, from there, uh, we're gonna train together all the time and invite people from different parts of the, the, of the country and with the sports commission and these things. And for the expeditions, uh, after this, the next mission is to really paddle around north of Cebu. That's the next level. So we're hoping that we can uh, fulfill this before the year and you know, keep that uh, drive going and pass this to faith. If I may add, actually JCI uh, Zoom boats are here. Uh, we are working closely with them uh, for a partner project to help, uh, they will help us um, choose uh, scholars um, for o uh, OSYs at the same time um, uh, na na um, normal students. <laughs> so we will be uh, um, setting up an ocean of sea of dreams which uh, we will be qualifying potential partners and uh, once they are qualified and uh, being reviewed by JCI and DOCC, they will be granted uh, a scholarship uh, grant from JCI. And um, within that program, uh, they will need to balance uh, study at the same time uh, training with DOCC. Yeah, so that's uh, one of the long-term plans of uh, EOCC, not just, you know, uh, not just a competitive race, but we want to go back to our vision and mission, which is uh, community development. Yeah, and, and to add also, you know, um, because we really wanted to promote um, uh, paddle sports, and uh, we want to bring people out in, in the water, uh, because, um, it's part of our culture. It's part of uh, it's in our blood, like what Basi said. Um, and right now, we only have two six-man of trigger canoe. They're located here in Cebu. That's why Cebu Islands are, are very lucky uh, to to be able to um, have this and uh, have a chance for the lady to experience paddling the OC6. But the intent also of uh, POCC is to bring in more canoes. Actually, what's getting us more excited is. Uh, we're, we're getting a lot of um, excited feedback uh, from the global paddling community wanting to go here in the Philippines and try the OC6 because it's already, the sports is already available in countries like um, uh, Australia, in Tahiti, in Hawaii, in Singapore, in Hong Kong. A lot of countries are um, getting into this kind of water sport and Philippines being com comprised of so many islands and uh, with um, uh, ancestry, no? islander ancestry, we should be doing the same. And that's uh, why we're trying to, to promote this water sport and we, we feel that um, uh, our country, particularly here in Cebu, is very much you know, uh, fitting to, to be um, a central location for um, outrigger canoe paddling. And with that note, actually, uh, we are very happy to, to let you know that uh, my club in Singapore, which is Singapore Paddle Club, is donating uh, 25 canoes uh, here in the for, for POCC. So we are working closely with JCI, <laughs> who will be helping us uh, with the uh, you know, customs. Um, uh, <laughs> <laughs> of the record. Yeah, so yeah, but uh, that, that is what is happening right now. Uh, we would want to bring in more canoes. So that um, um, more people can use uh, other water crafts other than uh, OC6. We also have um, surf ski, uh, OC1, and uh, also Tanapano. Yeah, so aside from canoes that we're being brought here, uh, from the island bus side also, the reason why also I built canoes because it's really hard to import equipment here. So that's why we have to, Cebuanos, we have to be very creative to make our own because Cebuanos can make everything. You know, we can, we can create a lot of things in our borders. So this is why Island Bus is never stopped on innovating as well. No, 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 no. Since we, we have this slide projected, no, I, I think it's good to mention also that um, 
uh, we're not allowed to just promoting battle sports, but uh, we're also into building communities and helping. Ang ating mga sanay na sanay sa outrigger canoeing are fisher folks, no? So during the pandemic, we actually um, did a fundraising campaign to help out our fisher folks. So that's one of the projects also of, uh, of the OCC. And, and um, OC6 is for everyone, even kids can do it, even pregnant people like me can, can do it. And uh, we're very happy to, to share the, the love for, for padding uh, to everyone. Uh, POCC is here to continue spreading um, the, the love for, for padding and to teach people uh, the right skills and uh, to make Filipinos ready to compete also in the global arena. Yeah. Any other questions? Yes. Hi, good morning. Uh, this is Medjo Boy from BYP Design and Global School. Uh, I just wanted to take a look or to ask this question. Do we have like specific uh, distance from the shoreline that we can do this uh, expedition or this activity? Because uh, just in case something happens, uh, yeah, do we have standard or do we maintain particular distance from the shore uh, to, to the sea for the for the activity and if there will be untoward incidents, uh, what do we have in plan? Thank you. For the distance, uh, in particular, let's say I'll give an example for Mual Mual, uh, we are aware that uh, at least 15 meters, uh, we, we cannot stop if uh, it is on a low tide. So we have uh, made uh, safety plans that we will not uh, dock the boat on the shore if it's a low tide, but we will um, anchor from a buoy, and then we will wait for high tide to, to dock the boat. So we will not um, disrupt, you know, this um, uh, corals uh, along the coast of uh, Mualuar. And then also uh, for the, you mentioned earlier, sea. Uh, if, uh, if there will be any towards uh, and that, we have, uh, what less do we have? Uh, yeah, we have also, we are working closely with the Bantay Dagat group for LGU. So every time we will enter a municipality, they are they are ready to uh, convoy us, perhaps, or be our safety, safety boat. And then also, we have um, submitted our letter for Pangi, the, they call this, uh, it's for maritime uh, department of yeah. what, what the the DNR, so yeah, one of the agencies uh, who is looking after the maritime aquatic <laughs> and then also with uh, with the coast guard uh, everybody was able to meet them and they are uh, well informed that we are doing this um, fighting expedition yeah yeah for the safety also our land so land support uh, Island Dadiran de Salazar uh, is the one also coordinating for with the safety also of uh, Salan. And of course, whatever happens is also a medic can also uh, conduct any safety stitches to us if we get like wipe out in the corals. <laughs> but of course, inside the kayak, one of the safety that we are going to, as you can see, we're not wearing light vest, no? Uh, but we are we have actually light vest underneath. Our 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 to do our seats. So, but worst worst case scenario, the waves are so high. So of course we're gonna wear my best for safety for the everyone. So that's very very uh, essential, no. And kasung magabian ni, of course we're gonna we are bringing we are bringing safety kits in our canoe, and we also have some plus lights in case uh, in worst case scenario for magabian yun. So now we take so that we can not be first because it's very important also. Uh, our safety chief uh, would like to add something. Hi, uh, good morning. My name is Randy Salazar, the designated safety for the expedition. So just to answer the question, Nemo, sir, uh, first and foremost, the ocean canals are actually designed for deep water travel. So these uh, boats are actually designed to go inter-island. Uh, the boats have been built, the ones that we have here in Cebu, have been built by island bus in such a way actually that it can be swamped by water but it won't sink. 
So, boyan siya. So, the worst case is maswang pa siya, then they, they practice the wheel wheels. For this expedition in particular, we will be observing, as you would notice the route, uh, we will be hugging the coastline as much as we can. So, there's an element of safety there. The land-based crew will be actually uh, maintaining line of sight as much as we can. Although, also, we will be in uh, radio communication with the expedition crew. On top of that, uh, we have already coordinated with the local government units and they will be providing Pantay Dagat and Coast Guard assistance as well. So they will be monitoring us and we will be also uh, be in touch with them through radio frequencies just in case, worst case scenario, something happens. But of course, given that it's an expedition, we don't know what's happened. Uh, definitely, we will be exercising uh, safety first and at the same time also added safety due to the fact that we are also in an in a time of pandemic for the safety of our partners and of course the communities that we will be visiting. Thank you, Randy. Questions? No more questions? Yes, remember this, that paddle sports is the safest uh, activity that you can do here in school. Also your canoeing, similar to kayaking and stand-up paddle boarding. So, can you, how do you can we move the same roots for the urban paddle sports? Uh, and similar to surfing, no? So, safety gain is there. Safety gain is sport. As long as, of course, you are doing it with uh, the right crew, with the right team. Alright. Uh, if there are no more questions, thank you very much, Buzzy. You're thank welcome. You very thank you for the interview. <laughs> yeah. Before we formally close the, the press call, and we're really keeping it short, no, because um, uh, of course we're all after safety. Uh, we we just wanted to show um, a teaser video just for you to visualize the exciting adventure that's uh, going to happen in the coming day. Lights off, please. <laughs>
or six ko lang po. Magtano no lang po this. And... Tukan na siya, muna siya yung OC1. Sa kapadler mo, sa katabukat eh. That's Coach Ray.
paddled from El Corso all the way here for three hours. And the purpose of coming here is part of our training in this upcoming expedition from El Corso around south of Cebu, from Argao to Slob, to Alegria, and to Mualboa. So this is partnered with Island Bus. Island Bus is a paddle sports company, and we're using the two canoes today to come here. The name of the expedition is Paddle Forward Cebu. This is to revive our paddling culture and to rediscover our canoe culture around South Cebu. Aloha, my hello. Uh, my name is Renante Del Socorro or Ray. Um, one of the crew sa uh, Paddle Forward na among Puyukon ang Cebu from El Porto to Mualboal. Ang uh, akong group sport kay ganahan dito ang dagat. I'm a scuba diving instructor. Then I've traveled both for four years. Nijoin ko ani sa Paddle Forward kay tungo sa ako ang love sa dagat. Ganahan food ko ng mural musikat ba or manon yun ang paddling di sa Pilipinas, especially nang sugod ko siya di sa Cebu, so hindut ko siya na apilan pa na ikaw ba niya ang um, murag pa yun yun na magpalambot sa sport niya. Ang akong junior na napagpadol kay from day 1 to day 5, so for 5 days. Kaya siyang ocean kanu is only here in Cebu, di sa Pilipinas, so hindut kayo ba na kita mga Cebuano, kita maguna sa pagpalambot ng sport. So akong hiyawang tanan mga bisaya, tanan mga Pilipino, na supportahin ni sa buwang pag, pagpadutuward, pag-expedition na mo pagtuyo sa Cebu. Hi, my name is Alberto Saavedra. I've been working uh, for the ocean and beach for like uh, almost 20 years. Uh, I've been connected to resorts. And now uh, I'm working as a sports supervisor, lifeguard. Then I'm joining this expedition for the purpose of, uh, or at least like to promote back our tourism. Because you know, uh, it's really affected by the pandemic. Then I'll be paddling for five days straight with uh, with my some of my colleagues from SMD. Because I'm a dragon boat paddler for five years also. Then I'll be competing to different competitions. In, in the Philippines. So, see you guys. Hello everyone. So, I'm Sheila Salana Alves. I'm 42 years old. I am a dentist by profession. Uh, I've been paddling for about four years now. I'm with the Subo Mighty Dragons, a jogging boat club here in Napolapo City. Uh, being in a paddling community is, is a passion for me. Even though I have, I have scoliosis, it doesn't stop me from doing what I love the most. I encourage everyone that scoliosis is not, is not really a disease. It, it won't stop you from being happy and doing what you love the most. So this coming June 12th, I am with the rest of my team, the 12th crew, with the Paddle Forward Cebu. So we will be paddling for five days. I hope you'll be with us along the journey and I'll see you guys and hope uh, uh, you'll send your good wishes and back of love to us. Thank you. Hello, uh, good afternoon everyone. Uh, my name is Medrino Alves Jr. I am 46 years of age. Currently I'm a government employee at the same time real estate brokerage. I joined this uh, admin activities since uh, almost four years already, and it is my passion. Considering uh, it's my passion, so I joined this activity, Paddle Forward Cebu, uh, this coming June 12th to June 16th. Uh, I'd like to invite everyone to witness, or maybe some of you would like to experience paddling ocean canoe. So don't forget to join us again, uh, Paddle Forward Cebu this year. Hi, I'm 
si Nathaniel Borromeo gikan sa Isla Miliran which is the ang katong hunting ground nila lapu-lapu sa una kung asa sila kuha ilang mga resources uh, Pito na po patuig na si Mungsay, si Ukli and lain-lain ng craft gikan sa island bands uh, gina-encourage na po ang katawan especially the younger ones to engage this kind of sustainable water activity to keep our culture alive so by doing so they know how to take care of surrounding waters by not littering of it because these are life to water's life my name is Sheila Abes I'm 16 years old um, I'm the youngest in the group among the crew and I'm into sports since I was a kid so I joined this canoeing and um, my mother and father told me to join join the club so I joined and I'm inviting everyone to witness the event Palo for in Cebu. During the pandemic, we believe, we believe that this is the next level for Cebu to bring Cebu in the map of paddle sports. This is my passion for the past 20 years, and I believe that I will continue on paddling and I will not stop paddling until we reach to International Ba Federation and we can invite other countries to come to Cebu and race with us, paddle side by side with us from the Pacific Ocean, from the New Zealand, from the Tahiti nation, to Hawaii, to California, and other water world that is into outrigger canoe paddling. So I believe that Philippines is an outrigger canoe nation. And this is the time to bring back the mana, the aloha, to the people. Mamuwi. Buksa ito ba? Ato rin ba?